and they're like, thanks, you want to give out? <laughs> What's up, y'all? I'm Rhea, and you are in the place to be. We have Carter's Vision in the house. Hey, what's up? What's up, Big Ben? Chill, chill, chill. Okay. How you feel being home? Um, I feel like at, at ease, like to a certain extent. Um, mm. I feel like I work so much, so it's like sometimes like at home I just chill with my little cousins, mom, grandma, like stuff like that, that like, you know, so it feels good. That's good. Yeah, I could just chill just a small, like, percentage. Yeah. yeah. Um, you are a director, mm -hmm. photographer, but anything with a camera, you got that one locked. Mm -hmm. How did you get your start? Um, so it was 20, I believe 18, probably like, uh, probably like the end of 2018. Like I'm just finishing up my uh, senior year elite. And it was a guy named Night Shot Kyle. He, uh, mm -hmm. he basically uh, gave me like a platform, gave me my first camera. He was like the first person who told me I could make six figures from just taking pictures. And I was like, well, I'm taking pictures, like, mm -hmm. but it's a level of like excellence you got to reach to even touch that type of money. So I, I knew I could get there. And he was like the first one who like put a camera in my hand, gave gave it to me for free. It was like, it would be great. It, it really wasn't worth a lot, but it was just like, that put like you on. yeah, like a two hundred dollar camera. Maybe it, it it made me probably like my first ten k, whatever the case may be, just from like jobs over time. So mm -hmm. I wasn't even that good, but. That was probably like how I got my like real official stuff. So that was pretty cool. And um, another person too, like uh, Ty Cox, like Lil Ty, mm -hmm. he uh, do parties. He was like one of the first people I did like a lot of work with too. Coming up like the 2019 era, um, doing his parties, just getting my feet wet, really learning the business and understanding like what I'm doing with the camera all, all together. Those was probably like two people that like when I first started, like. The push that is just like, all right, let me get my feet wet. And as time went on, it's just like the graffiti shit. You know? Cool. Yeah. And so now you are to the point where you are consistently Meek's videographer. You do camera mm -hmm. work for him and other artists. Yeah. Um, I just recently signed, like, well, I've been signed it, like a, a dream chaser deal, but I recently just signed like a five year extension with, with Meek, like, just. That's good. As a director, photographer, so it's, 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 it's more so like we locked in as like a dream chase of like franchise and mm -hmm. like eventually build it into like um, something that's like a whole production, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's, it's definitely super big now, but I've been with me for like two years now. Um, he put me in a position to like do everything I'm doing, he believed mm -hmm. in me, and nobody really like believed in me. He found me taking pictures in the club in Atlanta, and he just was like, nah, I fuck with you, so I didn't cuss on him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He's like, yeah, I fuck with you. So, um, I, I, I'm always loving for that. He definitely put me on and put me in position. And he always like mentioned me in big in, in big rooms, and mm -hmm. you'll never forget to mention my name. So, as you know, as the as the business grows and the level of business grows, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still 22. I don't really know everything about the business side, but I'm learning as time goes on, and mm -hmm. you know, as the deal goes on. So, it's definitely something that you know I just um, continue to like work and lock in with lock in with with him so. right talk about a time where you hit like a low and you were able to get past it and you you know in yeah, your for, for me um for me i feel like it was probably 2020 i would say in like baltimore and even and, and, and i even just say like in baltimore i feel like it was times where you know i, I had i had lows when i was on with me for real mm -hmm. i feel like you know what i'm saying like i feel like i, I really wasn't like I was at that pinnacle where I gotta reach that next level, but I had to do it so fast. Like you know what I'm saying? Like Meek put me in a fire on a high level at an early age, so it was like everything that I was doing, I had to do it super quick. The learning curve yeah. was like either you get it now or somebody yeah. else just won't replace you, and that could give you like a lot of anxiety. So that would like put me down, but like eventually it only made me better because it's like I right, know fuck that, I gotta do this. Mm -hmm. But I was saying Boston, man, it was tough back in 2020. I never forget it. I did probably like two people shoots, mm -hmm. and I don't know like if it was like a hate car they did one week or something like that. But I did like two people shoots. I never forget it. And um, both of them like just start writing stuff on Twitter like, "Don't book cars, vision, um, mm -hmm. this and that." And I'm hurt. I'm like, damn, like. 
but at the time it's like, you know, everybody just agreeing with it, like just adding to it. People I never met before in Baltimore. They like, no, nah, I don't book them. But I feel like when when Baltimore want to cancel you or people just want to cancel, it become like a thing to see. Like, yeah, I'm gonna cancel you, and I'm like. You know, I'm gonna take personal. It's like, right, you put my back against the wall, I'm gonna show you, like, mm -hmm. why you do that for. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I could have let that, like, discourage me or, you know, like, just mess up my whole mental. I was like, nah, I'm gonna go to the A, I'm gonna show you, like, I'm really him. Mm -hmm. So I went to the A, I did some stuff, and then it's like, damn, people in Atlanta really love me for real. They're like, nah, this shit hot. Why, the Tammy, um, mm -hmm. a couple of, like, couple of people. That's, not, that's when I really feel like, I, I really when they switched this. over. Yeah, I really could do this, like, not even on the Baltimore level, but, like, on a whole other scale. Like, and that's when I really got the confidence to be like, all right, now I'm really ready to show y'all. Like, why y'all even listening to them? And it was like a... It was like I watched it. I watched how it just flipped to, like, everybody, like, don't book college vision. And now it's like, damn, mm -hmm. y'all can't even really book with me for real now. It's mm -hmm. like a real, like... It's hard. You can't even really get in contact with me to book me, like... Right. And not even that. My prices is, like, elite level. So it's like... Can't even really, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, like I think people here to. forget that like it's other stuff outside of here. Like yeah. this is one very very small tiny market. Yeah, and it kind of it kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Like I, one of the girls, she had like went on like a live right. And mind you, I didn't even know this many people knew about my business or about the 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 thing. But she went on a lot of like had like I guess one of me that hop on and just. Be drama, I guess, mm -hmm. but it was like a hundred and something people on it. I'm like, damn, this many people know about my business, and like, mm -hmm. and that's when I knew, like, no, nah, I don't. It ain't about that many people know about your business. It's about the negativity and just like yeah. the energy. People here, I feel like they love to see that, which is understandable. People love for drama, but they ain't really like I'm about. I'm about like getting money and like supporting the people that supported me, loving mm -hmm. up my business like each year, that's what I'm about. So I ain't really like like that gets you me. I just was like, all right, I'm gonna show you and now it's like when people see me like they know like I'm really hum, I'll be all gonna take mm -hmm. that. So I think that's how I look at it. That's lit. Yeah. What are some like my fault. No, you What a... I'm dead not all of <laughs> yeah. What are some like personal um morals or just like ways that you like carry yourself or your business that you use it in your personal life and your business like what is some personal, staple principles morals, like, give me an example, like, like some principles like whether that's like you like honesty loyalty like what's like really important to you um damn that's a amazing question, I don't think I have that question. <laughs> Um, I feel like what's important to me, man, is um, I feel like in this business, what I feel like I, I had to understand and learn, nobody is going to be like 110% like loyal to you mm -hmm. at all times. At the end of the day, it's a business. People trying to like, you got to get that shit done regardless. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the, 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 the only thing I would probably want, um, what I try to stand on is just loyalty. Um, trying to help people we put them in position and, and, and work together to get there. Um. Those are some and just hard work. I feel like that's just like mm -hmm. right up the overall thing. I would say just hard work because like I I feel like it's, it's nobody that can really outwork me. I don't feel like I'm gonna let nobody outwork me. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of um, getting it done. Honestly, man, I'm gonna be honest. Like just just being a hard work. I feel like if you're around me, if you're working with me, you got like have like a a work ethic that's just like no other. And I feel like me watching me, mind y'all, I already had a work ethic before I even got with me. Right. But me watching them is like. All right, no, like, Maybe I thought I was rooting. Right. No, I really got rooted 10 times harder. Like, I watched him go in the studio probably, like, 8, 8 p.m., 7 p.m. He not leaving until 6 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And he energy on 10 the whole night. Like, sometimes we get tired. Don't take me wrong. But right. it's, like, it's never, like, and, and he said something one day, too, that, like, always stuck with me when he said it. He said, uh, you know, I get, I get anxiety. Or I get, like, I get, like, like antsy, like when I feel like I'm stuck in the same place. Mm -hmm. And when he said it, ain't really connect with me for a while. And I'm like, damn, like I feel like if you don't, if you don't feel like that, or you're not like that, then you like, can't you, go to the next. Yeah, you can't go to the next yeah. level. Like each year, each month, it's always something where it's just, where it's, you should be like, all right, damn, I'm really like, I got better at that. Mm -hmm. I got better at that. You see what I'm saying? So it wasn't even more so like when I was 20, 21, when he was like putting that pressure on me. It was just my he want me to hurry up and reach my next level. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people get scared and they get like 
unmotivated to like just reach the next level. But in uh, reality, yeah, sometimes you need them people to like push your uncomfortable yeah. position so you can just be like, fuck it. I'm already going to the next level. You stay, you stay <laughs> on the same playing field or you don't take risks or you just, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be there and, and eventually that shit going to tear you. You're just going to go down and down and down. Like, mm-hmm. if, you, if you stay the same, like, ain't too much, you know what I'm saying? So you got to like be willing to take risks, try new stuff. Like, I don't think like there's a, there's a problem with taking a risk as long as you understand what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You, you definitely put in the work in behind it. Yeah. That's how I feel. Do you ever make time to chill? Oh man, that's a that's a tough one. Um, I feel like I'm learning my balances now, but it's kind of like hard because it's always something going on. We always yeah. out of town. Um, I feel like now that I've been in it for like two years now, um, I try to have like my my balances a little bit more, to where like I you know I might go out for a, a casual drink or a chill with a, you know chill with somebody or. You know, chill with my fam. I try to, but it's hard, especially mm-hmm. living in New York. It's like, you know, it's always something that I could be born to just, you know, and I, and that's something I want. I want like I don't know. I feel like that's something I kind of want to get put in the back of my mind too. Like, always have like a balance. You know, what I'm saying I never wanted to become like a prisoner, just work, 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 work. Yeah. Work, work. But but it's like, in the back of my mind, it's always like. It is, it's almost like it's, it's trained and it's still in me. Mm-hmm. I don't like sitting still or like not doing nothing accomplishing shit. So it's like, what could I be doing to get better? You get what I'm saying? Right. And, and the process of that is like, is that. So that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are very, um, like, you love your family. Yeah. Um, I love your family. I love your grandmother. Yeah. She, when my grandma passed away, she like looked out for me. Like, yeah. she's always been you know, one of those people that I always received a lot of love from. Definitely, for sure. Um, talk about what it was like coming up and like, now that you are in a place where you working, you, yeah. you're an adult, like, what would you like to say to your younger self? Oh man, if I was, if I was to tell my younger self, man, I would probably say, uh, don't really listen to nobody else or anybody else mm-hmm. think. And continue. I mean, I did that back then, but I would just reiterate it. Like, don't really listen to nobody else or what they think about what God got in store for you mm-hmm. or what, what you want to do with your life. Because at the end of the day, it's like, I don't know, man. Like, everything God got for you is for you. So it's like, you got to just stay focused on, on, on what that is. So as far as, like, my family and my grandma, I feel like they still all those things. Like, my mom, grandma, they're mm-hmm. still all those, grandfather, they're still all those things in me. So it's like, with them, I appreciate them so much because, like, they just taught me to just, like, be myself. And, yeah. And I feel like, in all reality, that's why I am who I am today. That's why people fuck with me so much. The real ones that fuck with me, they know, like, ain't nobody perfect, but I'm my, I'm myself. You know what I'm saying? I, I show people love. I feel like I'm a good person, so, you know? I feel like those are, like, the things that, like, they even still to me, like, to the max. I do be missing them when I be gone, too, cause, yeah. like, we always like real close, like like my whole life. You mm-hmm. see, like I was neck to neck with my grandma my whole mm-hmm. life, so I definitely be missing them. But you know, they they they, they know I'm like a man now, so you know mm-hmm. I do what I gotta do. But I definitely like be missing them for sure. Yeah. Who are some of your like biggest inspiration? Um, as far as like what like like so, I mean I don't know. You mean like money wise or like just career wise type shit? Money wise. Money on <laughs> uh, Oh, man. Like, in general, like... Money. Uh, shit. I mean, I see that shit every day now, so it's, like, it's easy for me to see, like, the obvious question. Of course, me, yeah, man, yeah, like, yeah. I see him every day, and it's just the way he take care of his family, his mom, grandma. Like, those are some of the things to me, like, that I just aspire to be, like, to the max. Like, I look at it, and I... And, and mind you, this is a person who got many things on his plate, but one thing people can never see is... Yeah, bullshit son, bullshit mm-hmm. grandson, bullshit father. Like I watch him just check everything out the box. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure everybody's street and his friends, like everybody's mm-hmm. literally street. That's that's probably like who I really aspire to be, like and I'm saying it, like you yeah. really make sure everybody good. Like that's not easy to do. Like mm-hmm. it's, it might look easy, but it's really not easy to do. So, you know, I, that's that's somebody who I really aspire to be. Like I aspire by my mom, like a big mansion one day, mm-hmm. my grandma a big mansion one day, but you know, that takes time, but you know, it's definitely something I just look up to and I say like, no, I'm gonna really do that shit, so. Yeah. 
Yeah. As far as like just on the creative side, I don't know. There's so many people I look up to. Yeah. On the side. Uh, so many different careers that I just be running into now with these. But it's like, damn, like I really look up to y'all shit. Like, mm -hmm. um, there's so many in the name. Like I don't want to leave them by up, but it's definitely uh -huh. like a lot of people that I like look up to. That's cool. Yeah. Um, who are some of your? This is a music channel, so yeah. who are some of your favorite artists? Oh man! Like ever, like like ever, type. like ever, like um, now, back then, like anywhere, anytime. I'm not on lie. I'm on like I'm gonna be honest. I'm like a real R and B head. Mm -hmm. I fuck with R and B to the max. So I would say. Uh, I don't know. I always <laughs> been like a, I always been like a super heavy like John Legend fan. I like John Legend. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get to the hip hop. But I don't wanna go to the R&B first. Like, I like John, John Legend music. Soul Child, Anthony Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Who else? Uh, Avant. He he got some oh, hot yeah. shit. Avant fire. Uh, who else? So many, then like the newer vibes, like the Brents and the um, Bryson Tillman, mm -hmm. like little vibes like that, we gotta be like, so Jivion, I think it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we go to hip hop, uh, I would definitely got, I would definitely have to see if we're gonna order from like top to like bottom. I don't even like doing this, but <laughs> my man, my man, me, Millie's going first for sure, <laughs> top, top, number one, yeah. always. Then you gotta go Jigger for me, Jay Z. Mm -hmm. then, then for me, it might be. Probably Drake, I fuck with Drake. Yeah. Then probably G Cool. Um I don't know, I fuck with Lauren Hill heavy too. Mm -hmm. Um It's so many, I love hip hop, man. Nas definitely probably Nas, but yeah. Nas and uh, probably those I was I would see like on the music side. If you talking like Baltimore artists, um when I was like in high school, um like when I was in high school, I was like a big um like young moose, like I feel like I, I fuck on to the max. Like mm -hmm. when I was in high school, little scooter, of course. Those mm -hmm. are like my top two. Like him and little scooter. Every time about Baltimore, right now, like I don't really listen to like Baltimore music like that, like yeah. at all. So I, I don't really know like none of the hot shit that's really out here. But um, right I, now I, I we got like yeah, tech, like tech. Yeah, Marty. I was gonna say tech. Like Everybody tech. that's pretty much like on. Right yeah, now. like tech and Marty probably like some of, like my two favorites. I don't really know nobody else, mm -hmm. but them two like definitely. I fuck with their music. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, what's probably one of the biggest lessons you learned this year? This year? Mm-hmm. Mm. Probably one of the biggest lessons I learned this year is, um, wow, that's crazy, right? <laughs> um, we in the fourth quarter, of the year closing. Yeah, never, never get comfortable. Um, always understand somebody can replace you. Always understand mm -hmm. that there's people out there fighting for what you had. Never get comfortable. I always try to like exit to your next stage, your next level, and and grind. I would say never get comfortable um, because any at any day anything can just be taken away from you. You know right. what I'm saying? So you gotta like bring your P's and Q's. Never take anything for granted. Um, and and just try to reach that level to the point where there's nobody that can really tell you anything. Like you always trying to reach that boss level to the point where it's like nobody can really fire you. Nobody can tell you this is you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. you always should, you you always gonna have to listen to somebody but you know it, it's, it's a it's a it's a difference between listening to someone and someone actually telling you like nah this is what you had to do so right. definitely never get comfortable that's probably the only the, the, the thing that I, I really learned and shit and, it, and and just not having that comfortability that keeps me hungry and just keeps me like on my p's and q's of trying to accomplish what's next mm -hmm. to the max so I, I feel like that's probably like the biggest thing for me so now that you are, you moved to New York, you work in, do you have a routine, like a daily routine? A morning routine? Yeah, you know, um, it depends, because like, we might be in the studio from like, like I told you before, it might be like, yes, yeah, so from 6 p.m. all the way to like 5 a.m. So sometimes like, of course me, it's a little different. I don't really necessarily get to like sleep in. So it's like, if it was like a lot of, say it could have been like uh, Diddy that came in the studio that night or mm -hmm. the future, whoever, whoever might come in that night, by the time the morning come, by the time he wake up, like he should have all his pictures, like all the video mm. little clips and stuff. So sometimes, like I might want to go home, go straight to sleep, like but I gotta stay up just a couple, like an hour or two, right. just like pass just it, just to get it done, just to get it done, send it out to him. So by the time he wake up, if you want to post it, if you want to have it, just have it right there in our album. So it's like you don't really gotta do too much. That's like my my biggest thing for me. Like I just try to be proactive, so he don't mm -hmm. really gotta tell me. Like, I hate when he have to, like have to like. 
Your car, like, Yo, send, me send me no pictures. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like I, I, like, like, I hate for him to even ask me, like, Yo, send me pictures, or, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, send me this video, or, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes he might catch me slipping and I had to ask me because I'm already probably doing something else. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? But I try to just be on top of all that. So I don't really got to, like, really worry about it. But, um, yeah, that's just it. To, mm-hmm. to be honest with me. Do you have any favorite videos you shot or any, uh, like, I know that you also take photos for other artists. Yeah. Any favorites that, like, or memorable ones? Yeah, like? definitely. Nothing going to top, top the first one for sure because that was, mm-hmm. like, my my welcome like you you in this shit and it wasn't even a crazy crazy video but it was like the experience in itself like damn like mm-hmm. i never re- i never get that feeling again where it was like yo like I, I can't even explain the feeling like it was like a real like damn really shooting meat mail video and it yeah. was just it was just like you ready and i just started shooting like, that's it was, so like, crazy was some, like, crazy shit he's like you ready i never forget that was lemon pepper but mm-hmm. after that i would practice say uh on my soul, we were doing mm-hmm. this since the album. That was because Jay Z was like right. in the video. He did like a cameo in the video, so it was like, damn, I just shot Jay Z in the video. Mm-hmm. And it's like, a, I don't even like, I could put that on my resume. Like, I really yeah, did that. Yeah, yeah, like that's a good. Fact. Like, I really did a Jay Z video with me. So that mm-hmm. in itself is like crazy to me, also. But I feel like. All the stuff from the other project, like I did majority of his videos on Expensive Pain Project. Yeah. I did like probably ninety percent of the videos on that. But I feel like this one that's about to come out, I feel like my work is just like so much better now. It's mm-hmm. on like the quality level, mm-hmm. the editing, the just top the, the the storytelling. Yeah. So I feel like everything that's really coming out now probably gonna really be my favorite. Like we just dropped early mornings. So that's probably like just the feeling of that and just the the the, the whole like like, the outlook of how people looking at it is amazing mm-hmm. to me, too. Like, and Meek helped me direct a lot of videos, too. So he, he, that's he definitely, up. like, a lot. And a that's lot nice to have an actual artist, like, a yeah. big artist, because they had done millions of videos yeah, at this so point, he, like, his input. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, it, and it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's not that I don't know what I'm doing or, you know what I'm saying? I, I just don't know anything. He he might see something that I might not exactly. see. He's older than me, so, of course, he's going to just know different things about this era, this era, all right, maybe we could probably story tell, story tell that like a little better. Maybe mm-hmm. we could probably should get this angle. Maybe, we, like, you know, it's all things that I'm soaking in and yeah. I'm learning because, like, 22, you know, by the time I get 25, I'm going to have this shit in a super show cool. But yeah. it's cool to have that, like, you know, that big brother just trying to help you and direct you. And sometimes it might come off, like, you know, it's aggressive when he might say it, but I, I'm, but I'm you not really, under- yeah, you I'm not understanding, yeah, I'm not understanding yeah. how, he's, how he's saying it. I'm just looking at what he's actually saying, exactly. what he's trying to, like, accomplish from doing it. You know what I'm saying? When you're that level of artist, you, you, you got to expect that. Like, exactly. they're going to be, like, a little bit more, like, because they're big artists. So yeah, like, and they want that right. shit to look right. Yeah, I understand 110%. So... You know, when it's pressure that he hard on me, I just, like, look at it, like, he, don't look at it how he's saying it, just look at it, you know, look at it, like, how, what, are you, what are you trying to get in the conversation? Exactly. Yeah, so, that's that. Yeah. I feel like, um, I've been seeing you recently post, like, other people's comments, other blogs, like, making mm-hmm. comments about you and your work and noticing, yeah. like, yo, ever since Carter been with me, it's really been lit, like, his videos yeah. and everything. How does it feel, like... Because in my mind, you know, I'm, I'm looking at things from an industry perspective. There was a point in time where the videographers and the directors were just as celebrity as the artists, mm-hmm. as video vixens, like Hype Williams, and like people, like names like that, where people will know your work just from your name. Do you ever think about that? Like, you kind of starting um, to enter that realm? Uh, I kind of do, but I, I don't really like aim for that, though. I feel like yeah. I really love what I do. So I feel like, you know, like, like anything. I feel like when you really love what you do and you're really passionate about it, yeah. everything always comes for a circle. Like, I'm pretty sure Hype Williams never came in the game. Like, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to be Hype Williams. Yeah, like, absolutely like, not, he yeah. Came, he came in and this shit was hot, so people like, oh, no, that's Hype Williams. Like, it's an automatic, like, if your shit hot, then people going to talk about you. So I feel like there's a lot of videographers and directors that aim straight for that. Like, no, I want people to know who I am, my name, and... It's like, now nah, you forgetting about the whole the, career. Yeah. It's like, I, I watch photographers, photographers, directors. I watch them dudes, man, get behind the scenes photographers just to take more pictures of them and the artists. Just and so the they can, like, way. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I ain't never really want to, like, consume myself fully into that whole vibe of, like, me taking pictures with the artists and yeah, yeah, like you know what I'm saying, man. Like, nine out of ten, like a lot of these artists don't fuck with me. Like, yeah, me fuck with me. 
He yeah. really, like, beat got love for me. I know he fucked with me, so it's like, a lot of these artists, like, I'm not for the child really getting a picture with you. I'll post the work. I'll post what we be doing, because at the end of the day, it's a like, I'm not really posting a picture with you to make it, like, be really cool. Mm. Like, you wouldn't, you ain't help me get no check, you ain't help me really get no money besides what we might be doing at the time. Exactly. So it's like, you know, I try to stay it's clear work. that, yeah, I feel like when, when the time right, like, people already know who CV is now worldwide, but I feel like as the, as the time go on and I excel as years go on, like, it's only going to be up, like, you know what I'm saying? I was 20 when I came in, into it with me, yeah. so I feel like it's starting to get that now, but it's only going to get bigger as time goes on. Mm-hmm. And now, like... And, like, I, not to cut you off, no, too, but, like, like I said, like, I walked in the room, and Meek is the one who, like, Ben was telling Jay-Z about me, so it was to the point when I walked in the room, he was like, oh, you caught his vision. Mm. He's like, yo, you killing shit right now, but that ain't from, like, no other rapper saying, right. like, that was from Meek telling Jay-Z, like, mm. wow, this is the kid from Baltimore I was telling him about, so it's like, all that in itself proves, like, that shit coming like it's already people at the highest highest level that know who I am it's yeah. just a matter of like just continuing to like climb back literally like, do you f- do you feel like um there's anything that comes with being from Baltimore like um, do people make a comment on it do people probably, have a I think they got an idea <laughs> like probably just my accent that's how, <laughs> that's how people really like they just be like, oh, yeah, I can tell you from Baltimore. Uh-huh. That's what, and they know Baltimore, like, it's cousins with Philly. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard nose. They know if you come from Baltimore, you're special if you, got, if you made it to this level. I don't really Absolutely. see too many. I don't really see too many people from, like, Baltimore, like, where, I, where I'm at in those rooms. Like, I've probably, exactly. I might see somebody from the DMV, but if you're talking, like, straight up and down, just, like, Baltimore. Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You probably see me and Chino, man. Like, you probably go in a, in a party with Brian, with LeBron, mm-hmm. AD, whoever. Only two people that might be from Baltimore is me and Chino. Literally, it ain't really too many, like, other people. Right. So, no, that's, that's how I look at it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could go back mm-hmm. at, at any time period, do you feel like there's anything you would change? Nah, definitely not. No. I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I feel like everything that I experienced went through, I feel like it was supposed to happen that way. Um, I wouldn't change anything, man. Like, I feel like the relationships I, I, I let go, the relationships I built, I feel like those are, like, the, the things that, like, turned me into, into who I am today. Like, I feel like I was in prep school in 2019, right? Mm. That was probably, like, the toughest time in my life where I was really t- trying to like figure out who I am and I couldn't understand like why God was testing me like that mm-hmm. but it was like for one I was broke as shit in mm-hmm. prep school no money just hooping right I'm not getting no time I'm not playing so it's like I'm going to practice I'm practicing but it's like when games come I'm not even getting in the game it was to the point where like my mom we had a game in Baltimore at Towson and I'll never forget it man I got in play for like two seconds my mother my grandma over there they brought their friends there they thinking like I'm just this I ain't getting in at all and it's like in, a, in the process of that like I ain't even got nobody really hit up like on some like yo like bent to I'm like really like the long type shit I don't really got nobody to call and just be like yo yeah I ain't getting the game like you know what I'm saying like, I, don't, I don't know what to do so it was like a stepping stone for me to just understand how it is to be alone and really figure out like all right, what's my next step? And mm-hmm. that's what motivated me to be like, all right, nah, this ain't it. Let me try this. And it right. motivated me to be like, all right, nah, I ain't never gonna feel that feeling again. Like, now it's time to focus. So I feel like that's why I say I would never go back because, or change anything because everything I feel like that happened was meant to like make me who I am. Right. And you was, you took basketball really seriously. Yeah, so it was like crazy. Like I ain't playing. Like I just came off of, when I was in high school, like my senior year, I just came off a of state championship, mm-hmm. MVP, like offers, all types of stuff. So it was like I was just new to like all these people from all around the world that's on my team and on one team. So it was like, damn, really not playing. Like, that's dang, crazy. I couldn't, like shake it. Like I'm like, damn. Like, and, you know, if you take, like, basketball away from a kid that come from, like, that's all you know his whole yeah. life, like, that, like, it's a different type of hurt, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, and you don't know what's next, like, you don't know what you got to do after that, so it was like a, it was like a real, like, time for me, man. it was like crunch time, my mother telling me, like, mind you, I'm done prep school, I don't know what school I'm about to go yeah. to for college, I don't know none of that, so it was a time my mother telling me, like, yeah, you need to get a job, like, it's, 
I can't be paying on this stuff anymore. So it's like, damn, like, what I'm gonna do now? So I wind up getting, uh, my cousin wound up getting me like a little DTLR job, mm -hmm. grabbing shoes. That was cool for a second, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> it was like, yeah. Was like he was very home, yeah. Yeah, and that's when I met Stokey. Stokey was the one who, like, put me in rooms, too, when I first started the show. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, it was everything just panned out how it was supposed to pan out. It was, like, a crazy process. That but, is like, crazy. Yeah. Even you explaining that, like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so, I, I, and, that's an, and that's another thing. I was always, like, super humble because it wasn't going to work, too. So it was, like, it ain't matter where you, like, even put me at. I was just going to work. That's how I, like, even met Jeff. I seen it, he was having like a little event. I told, yeah. I told Jay, like, yo, I want to come, did a little video, gave it to her like the same night, but that's just on the strength of just like, yeah. let me try something. I can't be complacent just stand in the same place. So, uh, everything was dope, I guess I was just, mm -hmm. Do you feel like there, uh, there's anything else you eventually want to tap into? Like, any other passions, any other? I, uh, definitely probably like writing movie scripts. I uh -huh. feel like that's like my next like level of um, any last minute shout outs, any list? I would like to shout out Dream Chase for one, the mob. Um, shout out my mom, grandma, I appreciate y'all always. And just the people that's just been like locking in with College Vision and supporting me and what I do. Um, it ain't like an easy thing to, I feel like do what I do, but the support I get is like, it's genuine. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I love, I love the support. Um, I appreciate everybody that helped me to become who I am today. Um, it means a lot to me. That's about it for me. Okay. Yeah, keep doing your thing, too. This thank you. Sure. Thank you, thank you. Carter's vision. Yeah. We out. That was good, I think, right there. Yeah.